Support School is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Gordon Tobin here for RealAgriculture.com. Uh, today we're at the Agris Cooperative Office in Chatham, Ontario, and uh, I'm joined by uh, Dale Cowan, Agris Agronomist. Sir, hey, thanks for having us. Oh, you're quite welcome. Thanks for being here. Awesome. Hey, so we're going to follow up today. You're going to talk a little bit about precision agriculture. And uh, for the folks who, who weren't out with me a couple of weeks ago, I was out flying drones and UAVs, um, unmanned aerial vehicles, with uh, your colleague, Robin de Brower. And what we were trying to do is get a sense of how farmers and agris are using um, UAVs these days, how they work, and what type of images and information um, you can capture with those, and how an agronomist like yourself is using those to make precision agricultural pres prescriptions for farmers. Um, so what we've done is uh, we've taken some of the, we've got a lot of stuff that um, Robin captured, and now we're going to put you to work. Absolutely. You're ready to go? This so, is the fun part. This is the fun part. And I think what we want to talk about today is how you're using those images uh, for, for nitrogen management. Sure, sure. Well, first of all, uh, managing nitrogen as a system is one of the things that we like to promote. And, and it's, it's often those images are more useful when you're comparing two different treatments. And that's exactly what we've done in these maps is comparing a farmer's standard treatment against something we're proposing to do a little differently and hopefully a little better and uh, hopefully it'll follow through in the harvest uh, showing us a, a better yields. Awesome, awesome. Well, so I tell you what, let's take uh, a closer look at uh, the images that Robin has been capturing and, uh, and how are you going to use them to make a prescription? Absolutely. Rob, Robin has all the fun, now I have to do all the work. So what we're looking at here is, is one of the maps that Robin, uh, one of her final analysis and uh, normally we use an NDVI, a normal difference vegetative index. In this case we used a SAVI, which just means we're adjusting for soil brightness. When you go early around June 9th, sometimes there's bare soil showing, so we just take that reflectance out. So end up, uh, the, the legend helps us understand the map. The green areas are the areas in the field with the most growth, the red areas are less growth. So using this kind of analysis, we get a, an overview of just where the growth is occurring in the field, where it's better, where it's uh, not, so, not so robust, not so vigorous, and it helps us understand, well, what's going on in this field. And, and one of the things that's nice is we, we have set up a nitrogen trial work here and what we've got is on the east side of the field, all the nitrogen has been applied uh, at side dress time. So we've got 180 actual land on. And then on the west side, we only applied 90 uh, pre-plant. So we're trying to compare a different nitrogen strategy here. And we're using this uh, NDVI or SAVI analysis to help us understand what the growth is like in the field. And we can see that we have much more uniform growth where all the nitrogen has been applied. So we're assuming that on the west side where it's less growthy, we've we got more opportunity to, uh, to adjust the nitrogen rates there. So once we have this image completed and we've gone through our analysis, we have our setup, we know what we're comparing, we know what our trial work is going to be. Our next step is then to look at the, uh, an application strategy of just how are we going to put on the extra nitrogen. And we've chosen a, a late season application of agritain tree urea over the top with a high clearance spinner spreader. So this is a resulting application map. We've gone in, we've interpreted those values uh, where there's a, a low reading, we're going to put on more nitrogen. That would be the, the green area on the map, upwards of 275 pounds urea going on there and the red areas were essentially at, at zero we're not going to put any more on there because the growth is indicating it likely doesn't need any more and that was the kind of applicator that was uh, we used to to apply the apply the urea over the top so the, so the next question then is after we've done all this have we have we made an, a difference have we improved anything and the value of the drone is we can fly at any time so we went back on june 24th and we flew the field again and lo and behold we can see a vast improvement in the growth but we still see some areas that are still management opportunities some of those red colored areas on the map that are not as growthy didn't respond to nitrogen so there's some other limiting factor it's just showing us where to go and practice the rest of our good agronomy so it's not bad uh, from that standpoint but we seem to definitely have improved and again when we uh, look in the field this is what you would see from ground level so you may think things are looking okay and no variability but obviously there was lots and a variability and so an opportunity to do something differently and so comparing the two maps on June 9th on your left and June 24th on your right we definitely see an improvement in growth very gratifying to see it but also some other opportunities to do a better job with some additional agronomy uh, expertise in this field and doing a little more in-depth scouting 
So Dale, if you take a closer look at this map, it looks like you get about a 42% improvement in crop growth thanks to, you know, better nitrogen use here. Um, have, have I got it right? Well, I, I think uh, the, the beauty of being in a GIS and being map-based is you can calculate the acres involved. So straight up, we see an improvement of, of uh, you know, from 19.8 acres of poor growth to 8.5, that 42%. So we, we see that improvement. We are, we're going to assume at this point it's related to nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Could be some other factors. We also see that there's another uh, uh, area in there that we do need to go and practice some good agronomy on and, and some of these uh, areas here that we need to go do a little more investigation on. But the final analysis in all this, we'll be getting the yield map from the combine this fall right. and laying it on top of this field and comparing the two treatment sides and just seeing whether we were more effective in, in more nitrogen use efficiency or greater yields. Right, right. Now, these are June 24th, June 9th maps. Um, is the next thing, is the next overlay the yield map, or is there, is there anything else you're going to be doing during the uh, depend, Weather dependent, we're probably going to fly this again with the drone sometime here late August, early September, one final pass, just to see how these uh, zones line up again and whether things have changed. So there'll be one more uh, aerial map here uh, from the drone uh, sometime in late August, early September. Awesome. Hey, well, uh, hey, thanks for your time today. Um, and I'll start with Robin in the drone, and it ends right here um, with a... Uh, prescription on nitrogen and uh, we'll talk about some more maps down the road. Absolutely.